Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the end of a long day. Hopefully it's been extremely productive for you. I spent some time manning one of the booths out there myself for a few hours and had some great conversations with uh, a number of you. So um, hope you're enjoying participating in this event today. And uh, we very much hope you enjoy um, the talk we're going to give today. So we're going to be talking about the Lightning Sales Console this afternoon. My name is Brooke Lane. This is John. Don Kusera. Hey, everybody. And we're, we're combining the best of Sales Cloud and Lightning Platform to give you a great overview of how the Lightning Sales Console works. All right. So we've been listening to customers and feedback uh, from many of you, both one-on-one -on -one in person um, as well as in group environments like this, and certainly through the community. And uh, we've worked on and developed what we're extraordinarily excited about at this time in the console. Um, and are really excited to continue to listen and to build for you. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to John to go into the next steps. OK, let's use some slides. Who loves slides? Yeah, safe harbor. Don't buy anything we haven't built yet. OK, how many people in the room have Sales Cloud? Almost everybody. OK, we're at a good place. How many people have a developer edition org? OK, everybody in this room, you all have access to the Sales Console apps today. You can create console apps in your Developer Edition org. In your Sales Cloud org, you already have a Lightning Sales Console app. All you have to do is switch to it. One of the things that we didn't really tell people about a year ago is that we changed our licensing, and we gave console apps to everybody for free. If you're a professional edition, you never before had access to console apps. You do now. If you're Enterprise Edition with Sales Cloud, you used to have to pay an extra 10 bucks a user a month to add console access. We included that for both PE and Enterprise Edition, and Developer Edition is basically an EE org. So you don't have to do anything fancy, and in Lightning, we made it even simpler. You used to have to check a box for every single user to say, this user can use console apps. You don't have to do that. Console apps are just apps. You go to Lightning, you switch apps, that's it. So we really tried to make it easy. We gave you all this great value for free, and you should definitely take advantage of it. We gave you sales and service console apps out of the box, too. Previously, if you're a service cloud customer, you have like this sample console app and a service cloud console app. Now, thanks to our friends in sales cloud, you have a Lightning sales console app. You could recreate this yourself if you want, but it's basically a good head start. It has all the objects configured the way you want. It's got some custom lightning pages with additional columns and related records. And it basically has like utilities and other stuff to save you time configuring it. So these are all available for you. And as we mentioned, developer edition orgs, you can create custom console apps as well if you choose. So the other big news, recently in summer uh, 17, 18, we're in 17, right? <laughs> summer 17, console apps are generally available. They were in beta for February, and what this means is that we think this is a high-quality experience we stand behind. It's fast, it's configurable, the features we have in there we think are killer. So we highly encourage folks to use it. Some of the things we recently made better, um, we'll go through this in the demo and stuff too. Tab memory, we remember your tabs. It used to be in Classic that only when you close the browser tab or hit refresh or hit logout that we'd try to remember them. If you had a session timeout, you're out of luck. If you're using multiple computers, it could kind of get out of sync. Now it's basically every minute we take a snapshot of all the stuff you're doing so that if somebody interrupts you and is like, hey, just one quick question, one quick question. And then, of course, it's never quick. And then you have to go do something else. You can get right back to that thing you were just at. So that's huge. And I'm pretty uh, happy about how that turned out. We have these great three-column lightning pages. So this is a way to organize basically more stuff. I was just talking to somebody before, and they're like, I want everything on one page. Well, you can do that and squish it all in if you want. But it's basically a better way to organize uh, throughout this. You have more flexibility with your lightning pages. And we've given you this three-column one out of the box. We've added keyboard shortcuts. So for the power users amongst you, if you want to throw away your mouse, you can. You can use all the keyboard shortcuts to jump between the lists and the workspaces, and close things, and open them, and basically work way faster. This is killer for the folks that are spending a lot of time in Salesforce. And then what we're going to dive into pretty deep in the later part of the demo, JavaScript APIs. 
So uh, anybody familiar with the classic console integration toolkit? Okay, well you're gonna learn sort of about it in the lightning version that we have. We basically took the best of what we had in classic and we created those methods in lightning so that you can really have these components brought to life and have them talk to each other in console apps. And then of course, split view. Uh, a lot of times with sales reps, they wanna open a bunch of stuff fast. If you're working a list of leads, you might wanna work open five leads in parallel. If you do like the whole right click new tab thing, it takes a little while. If you wanna just like click one by one, you gotta go back and forth with focus. Split view is kind of like a squished list that lets you open stuff super fast without having to wait on the seagulls. So you'll check it out in the demo, it's great. Utilities, um, so just get familiar with the terms. This is our footer. So in classic service cloud console, you had a footer. In regular sales cloud and classic, you had homepage sidebar components. Utilities are this universal footer, which gives you one click access to the power tools you need to do your job. And we've put a couple of those power tools right in the console app for you. So we have history in there by default. So you can get to all the stuff you recently opened and closed in case you're like, oh crap, I didn't want to open that or I didn't want to close that. You can also copy links super fast. Um, we also give you access to notes. So you can see all of your notes with one click. You can put custom components in here. And this is a great way to have like the most important stuff at your fingertips. Okay, so what are these JavaScript APIs? Let's dive a little bit deeper. These are a real good way to automate things with your utilities and with console navigation. So some of the things that people have asked us, partners especially, is I created this great lightning component. I want people to open that utility. I want them to click on something. I want something to happen over here, but I also want to minimize that panel. Now there's a JavaScript API to do that. Hey, when I get an inbound call, I want to automatically open up a new account. You can do that with the JavaScript API. I want to change the workspace tab to new message when somebody, when I get an inbound API call so that we can alert the rep that has that tab open to basically poke around over here. You can now do that with the JavaScript APIs. So these are available in Pilot. You can use them out of the box for uh, developer edition orgs. And if you want to use your sales cloud org in production or sandbox, you can ask your account rep to get into the Pilot. Uh, how many people in here want to dive into the code? Get a sense for the coders or not. Okay, so this is most of the code for the presentation, so I'm <laughs> sorry if you want to dive deeper, but I wanted to at least go a little bit into how you include these JavaScript APIs. So first in the component markup, it's pretty straightforward. You just say, okay, force workspace API access, and that gives you access to the JavaScript APIs for tabs. So if you want to do stuff with tabs, this is what you include then you just give it an ID so you can refer to it later. For the utility bar, let's say that I wanna change the name of the utility or minimize it or stuff like that. Force utility bar API access. So pretty straightforward, include that, you have access to all the methods. And of course you have to be part of the pilot in production. To reference those, the way that we do it right now, component, find, and then whatever this ID is. So if you're doing a utility method, it's okay, utility bar, because I call it utility bar over here. And then you just call the method and the arguments. We've got good API docs, these are super easy to use. We're gonna give you a live demo about how this works in much more detail. Uh, we've got callbacks. Um, there's a raging debate on my team if we should also add promises. So if you feel strongly on this, as I know developers do, please let us know as we're thinking about that for GA. There's a lot of methods, we'll go through them. And without further ado, Brooke is gonna take you through how awesome Sales Console is. All right. So I heard John say, Brooke will show you split view in his demo, and I wasn't going to. Oh. But I don't want to disappoint, so I will. And it's easy. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a lead list view, and I simply go up here and select from my third item, my new third item on the list, which is a split view, and boom, I've got my list over here on the left side, and note that the first four columns in the list view are all represented here. Uh, this first one doesn't do very well because one of the columns is blank, but Aaron, his title, his company, and this city. So it's really cool because not only do we show you 
uh, the name in this case of the lead, but we also stuff a little more information in there so you can get a better sense of what's going on. So that is the list view. Uh, all right. So let's go back. Um, actually, for the remainder of the demo, let me do this. Let me take uh, the position of some individuals who will be using the sales console, and we'll kind of go through a day in the life of a few of them. We'll start out with an inside salesperson. We'll call her Cindy. And Cindy spends her life in the sales console because it's a high productivity workspace optimized for high velocity sales environments. Right? She's working, she's not spending her day in the field, she's spending her day with people on the phone and through social media channels and whatever else comes in. Her marketing team generates leads from all sorts of, sort of places and, and they all throw them into a queue for her. They assign a bunch of them to her every day or every week. And as she looks down the list, she realizes very quickly that there's no way that she can get to all of these leads. And she's got to figure out a way to identify those leads that are most valuable so she can attack those first. So she's going to drill into a list that's called My Einstein Leads. And these are, are leads that have been scored by Sales Cloud Einstein. And Einstein Machine Learning, or Einstein Lead Scoring, scores leads based on a machine learning system. And this is much better than traditional admin configured rules because it actually goes through your data and identifies the characteristics of the leads that make them most likely to convert. And those characteristics can be different for every organization. Um, and so I'm going to, so Cindy's going to grab all of these leads and she's going to go up here and add them to a call list. Holy smokes, this is fantastic. Now she's got this list of leads in priority order from highest Einstein score to lowest, all right there in front of her. Right? She can minimize this list and bring it back up. But now she can work through this list of leads in the order that's prioritized for her without losing track of where she is or where she wants to be. So she wants to get this Riley guy on the phone right away. But first she's going to open up this lead and check out a little bit of information about the lead before she presses that phone call button. So first thing she knows is she goes up here to this upper right corner and she sees this Einstein lead score of 92 and she knows this is a strong lead because Einstein has identified that this industry biotechnology is a very strong industry, the title is solid, um, and, and that Riley's interested in either some specific products that we sell or maybe an area of product that we sell into. Next thing she scans down to is the engagement history. So she sees that uh, that Riley's received and opened an email from Pardot, our B2B marketing automation system, has visited our website, and has even gone so far as to register for a webinar that we've got upcoming. Next thing she does is to look at PATH. So she is going to see that, uh, that PATH is filled with a bunch of great stuff. It's got qualifying questions. It may have team best practices, processes that her team has put together as as being uh, her responsibility to follow. But PATH is a great source of information for her as she steps through the lead conversion process. And now, armed with this information, she's ready to make this call. So she's going to go to phone call, hit call next. Got to allow the microphone to be used. Um, and Riley's dialing. Hopefully we have cell service in here, or my Do you ever demo like dies. Yourself? Oh, there we go. Just took a while. So let's say in this case that uh, Riley's not a a available to be contacted. We go straight to his voicemail. We have this great new tool with Enlightening Dialer for that. It's a voicemail. So I've pre-recorded a voicemail, and now when I hit the, hear that beep and I know I'm getting the voicemail, I simply click that and walk away. The voicemail will be left. I have to do nothing more. What a great time saver for agents. Yeah, clabbies. All right. Yes. Let's leave some voicemails. Um, all right. Next thing she's going to do is go down here to macros. And this is a beta product, but we're super excited about this. So macros, I'm just going to double click on this update status and follow up call macro. And you're going to see some things fire away on the screen for a moment here. Um, but this is a fantastic way for you to give the power to users to do multiple tasks 
that may need to, do, that may need to be done. So, uh, so with that, that was a specific task set that I created for when I leave a voicemail, and let's see what happened. So the lead status was new when I came in, and now it's set to working, right? So I updated the status, this, this lead has been contacted, and more importantly, and this was really cool, I've set a follow-up call for July 3rd. So I had a little um, process run that said, set it for five days out or the next business day, and July 3rd is the next business day out. So now I can ignore this Riley lead and follow up with it um, when it's appropriate. So now I'm done with Riley, I'm going to go back to my phone list, pop that back up, and take a look at my next lead, and this guy is Guy Bohan. And Guy is, uh, again, another high-scoring lead, but again, I want to keep emphasizing the fact that machine learning identifies those characteristics. We don't need to necessarily create a list of characteristics like vice presidents or directors and maintain and manage those anymore. The system identifies those over time. And, and allows us to just do work. Um, so I'm going to place this call to Guy, wait a few seconds while it connects. There we go. And now we can see that, uh, that let's say we're on this having a conversation with Guy, and we say, interested, we'll say, interested in pricing, mentioned, quantum hear my voice lower quantum. That's the competitor. We don't like quantum. Um, so I've logged this call, and I'm ready to have it shoot over to my account executive. I'm ready to convert this lead into an opportunity and have it go over to my account executive. But the first thing I do is I, as I start to mouse over to convert it, I notice that there might be a duplicate, because I've got a component on here that informs me of that. Right? So there's a, duplic a potential duplicate match. I click on here. I set up a side-by-side. And I'm able to review, because one of my responsibilities is data quality, I'm able to review down the list, and I do actually identify that these are different people. My dupe rule triggered, these aren't the same person, I can go on with my life. But again, I think the point here is that we're pulling all of these, this functionality into this single workspace for you to use. So really, it's that, that you know, we continue to build that ability for you to stay in one environment and not have to do tab hopping all day. So now I'm ready to convert. I click my convert, my convert status, um, or select my convert status. Uh, I've got an account name in there, and I will put a, um, a, a opportunity name, because I want to create an opportunity. And now when I click convert, my new account contact and opportunity will be created from my lead. So then the final thing I want to do before I turn this over is I want to see how I'm performing. Right? So now I'm rocking and rolling through my day. I'm utilizing Einstein. I'm utilizing the console. Well, I've got a scorecard here. So we actually uh, have a third party uh, analytics provider who we're working with. And they have given us a tool that allows us to track individual metrics. This is great. So we get to set these metrics. You can see three of them are weekly metrics. One of them is a quarterly metric. But I can flash these up for myself and see how I'm performing. And the more you, salespeople I talk to, the more I see the value in this kind of thing. They're constantly wanting to know exactly where they stand, how many calls they log, and leads converted, and the business opportunity, and those types of things. So it's configurable to individual organizations, but it's just a great way to have data right there, and a great way to capitalize on this real estate that's offered to us by the utility bar. So now let's say I'm the Casey, who's the account executive, and I've got, received this lead uh, or sorry, this new opportunity uh, from my inside salesperson, and I look at the screen and it says, opportunity is unlikely to close in time. Oh no, what do I do? Well, I drill down, let's get some more information, and it says the competitor was mentioned. So I can see that, that this individual wants pricing, or the company wants pricing, but there's ur additional urgency in that we are obviously against somebody else. So I wanna send an email, and I wanna send it as quickly as possible, so let me, I'll put in the uh, procurement, procurement manager for my, the company. And then rather than typing out an entire extended email, I'm going to go up down here, sorry, and choose a template. And I will simply choose my proposal template. 
So with just a couple of clicks, I've now populated my email with all the information I want to send to this person, the, info, you know, the, the proposal that they requested. They've now got pricing as soon as I hit the send button. And I, as the account executive, have the ship going in the right direction. And that's a really good thing. So finally, before I move on, I might want to ping my manager. So I'm going to at mention Sarah. Right, this is coming from this particular record, so she'll know what record it's coming from. So I'm just going to say pricing might need a discount. Right, and again, because it's coming from this record, it's identifiable to this, all the knowledge that's needed is, is communicated with a simple message out of the record. Um, cool, all right. So the last thing I want to show you is because we have enabled, we really want uh, console to work for many, many, many users, is we want to take the, um, the position of a, um, of a manager. And a manager's life is about communication. Communication across and down through their organization to their leads and their reps and their counterparts. And obviously, too, up to the senior directors and VPs of the organization. What better tool is there than dashboards? Because we've got visual communication and obviously a great way to start a conversation or have a conversation. And so here's an example of a dashboard with all sorts of great, uh, great components in it. We've got you know overall contact volume, we can see trends by day or by week. I can see how I'm performing against some quarterly goals um, and how my margins are, are moving over the months. And then as I scroll down here, I can see how the individuals are performing on my different teams. And in this case, I see that Cindy and Casey, the two people who I've highlighted today, are top performers in my organization. So again, all users can use console, and it is a great, fantastic tool um, and we, we're extraordinarily excited about what we have today and, and what we'll continue to build for you guys in the future. That's my demo. Cool. So we're going to demo more. Awesome. Can you tell he's given this once or twice? It's a nice <laughs> polished demo. Okay. So now we're going to go into, let's go through some examples of these lightning JavaScript APIs in action. And what we're using as the star of this demo is a custom console component. Just show of hands, how many people have created custom console components for your org? Okay. Maybe a third of folks. So um, this is basically some HTML and JavaScript under the covers, which calls our JavaScript APIs using that include and the other methods that we had mentioned on the slide. So first, this thing's kind of tiny. It would be kind of nice if we made this bigger. So first, what I'm going to do is go into my pick list of API methods, and I want to set the panel height. So first, we are going to make this a little bit taller. How about 700 pixels? We're going to fire that off, and then, oh, that's a little bit too big for this demo. So we're going to do 500. And so this gives you a sense that you can use these to dynamically change the size of your utility. Maybe you want when people click on something to make it bigger. Well, that height is good. I want to make it a little roomier, too. So let's make it uh, maybe like 400 pixels wide. OK, maybe 500. So this is a, hopefully an example of how we can dynamically change this. So OK, now we've got a little bit more room to read and see things in here. What are some other things we could do? OK, console API enrichment center. It's, it's a meh title. Why don't we make something better? Like, we're going to call this the super awesome demo component for DX and just make it super wordy. Bam. And then we updated the label here in real time. So some of the use cases that folks have wanted to do is, Let's say that you have a phone component. You might want to have this change every second to be a timer. So you could have this just scroll through like 001, 002, 003. Some other folks want to use their custom console components to like set context. I want to change business units and maybe like do some other automation. And you can have the label change as that changes to reflect uh, the state. Other things we can do in here is that icon is like kind of meh. So we can go into our lightning design system. And in the utility icons, this is a list of all the icons that you can use to populate it. So in here, some of them that I like, I think we're going to go with, uh, let's go with automate, because this is kind of like a gear type thing. So we're going to go with automate, set the label for that icon, and then we dynamically changed out the icon. 
So again, this is another way to like sh signal to people that you're changing state, or that maybe this went from like an alert to a non-alert place, uh, and a good way to like communicate things that are changing in here. And so we change the label and the icon down here, but up here it's still different. You have control over both the utility button as well as the panel itself. So now we're gonna go in and let's make that panel header uh, into that same icon. So we now change that icon up here. And we can keep going. So we've got panel label. We're gonna make it our even better demo header. And then you can have that go in. And so this is all good and well. And then to make things minimized, let's say I just want to minimize the utility on click or something else, you can just pop that. It will close it down automatically. The opposite is also true. You can have other things happen, whether it's server side or client side. You might say, I really, really want to pop open my custom lightning component. Maybe this is like red alert. We want to make an alerts component. We want to tell everybody when we've got a new spiff, like a new deal for our sales reps. Maybe we want to tell everybody when we're having some other issue that they need to be aware of. You can use these JavaScript APIs to pop open an alerts component so that they know exactly what's going on. So this is all of the utility methods, or at least a portion of them, that are accessible in the developer edition orgs and that you can get to with this pilot. Where this gets really cool, and by the way, this works for non-console apps too. Everything I just showed, you don't have to be in a console app to do it. Every app can have a utility bar. Where it gets really cool though is with some of the tab stuff. So with the tabs, uh, first I'm gonna go over to United Partners. We usually have to, to work with the tab ID. And basically this is just like a made up identifier that's only good for the session. So first I want to get my tab info. So I wanna get my focus tab info. This says what is the user looking at right now? We're gonna fire that off. What that's gonna give us is this response. The first thing in the response is that tab ID. So I'm gonna copy that C tab two, which refers to United Partners. And then we can use that for the other APIs in here. So let's say uh, with United Partners, maybe we got like an inbound email from them. So similar to with the utilities, we can set the tab label. So I can go in here, I can change this to something like new email response. So you can, in real time, have things change in here. Okay, this is a live demo. I'll have my team look at it. Hopefully you get the sense <laughs> that these are great. This isn't beta, this, or pilot. Um, and if there are any issues, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. We'll make sure that they're awesome. Uh, let's close this one out for now. So when you close it, you have to give the tab ID. So I'm gonna go up here to the tab ID, and we're gonna get rid of United uh, Partners. So this could be a great way to automate like tab management. Maybe people are doing something in here, you recognize what they did, you wanna implement like a custom shortcut and automatically close it for them, and bam, it's gone. Other things you can do, get all tab info. So you can get all of the open tabs that you have. And this is super long response. Um, this is really powerful when you're not sure what people are looking for. If you wanna see if a record is already open, if you wanna maybe act on all of them, like maybe I wanna go crazy and change the icon for all of them. Maybe I wanna close them all for a custom close all button. And so this is a great way to just quickly get to all those tab IDs. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go with Riley Schultz. And then some of the other things we can do with Riley Schultz is figure out, is she a subtab? So subtabs and console uh, are the related records. So why don't I go in here and open up a uh, voicemail. So when I open up a related record, you have subtabs. So they're organized under Riley Schultz. This is the workspace, and then left voicemail is a subtab. And so these uh, JavaScript APIs are a good way to check is a given tab a subtab or not. This can be helpful for knowing, do I wanna pop it open as a new workspace tab or a new subtab? So to give you a more concrete example, let's say that I have this voicemail. I'm gonna go into history. I'm going to uh, go into my Riley Schultz. I'm gonna get my left voicemail link for it. And this is a good way to just grab links on the fly. Oh, we're off VPN, this should be fun. So we'll see what happens here. So if I wanna open up a new workspace tab, you put in the URL. So this forces it to the top level. This was basically that uh, voicemail that we just had as a subtab. I can then pop that open, and then this will automatically open that as a top level tab. 
So this is really powerful for a lot of the flows you want to do. So like in Brooks demo, you're like showing, hey, you can use your call down list. You can screen pop with that so that we just open that record automatically. And that's the exact same things that we're giving you the capability to do at these JavaScript APIs. You could basically recreate all these great phone com functionalities uh, dynamically to automate all the tasks that your users need to have done. Okay, so what's a good one to go and close with? Focus tab. Uh, focus tab is a great one to switch when you really just want to move their attention over like with a super alert state. So we can go back in here. We can go to our original tab ID, and then this should move us back to Riley, or actually that was our dashboard one, um, to kind of round out where we have with the JavaScript APIs. So hopefully this gives you a sense of like the capabilities, what you can do. And I think at this point, we're gonna start to stop talking and start listening. If you have any questions for us. So I think the question was, is macros available on the console? Is that right? Yeah, with, with what you were just showing. Um, so what I was just showing you, the difference between macros and these JavaScript APIs. So first, macros are not yet available. So he's showing you the future. So again, don't buy what we haven't built yet. But it, we swear it's coming soon. Um, macros are a way for people to click and define automation by clicking. So you don't have to write any code to do macros. JavaScript APIs are similar and allow you to do automation for other things. So macros act on publisher actions. I want to automatically send an email. I want to update a field. I want to um, log a call, do a chatter post, and like, go through all of that. These JavaScript APIs let you do things with tabs. I want to open a tab. I want to close it. I want to rename it. I want to change the icon. I want to pop up a utility. I want to change things about the utility. So they're really acting in two different places. They might overlap eventually, but macros, declarative, so you can click on it, publish your actions. APIs are for tabs and utilities. Yeah, Utility Bar is available to any app for free. The way you go and add it is go into Setup, like all things. And uh, if, if I can click fast enough, I'll show you, but I might not be able to. Go into App Manager, an App Manager for every Lightning app, not the classic ones. So I won't change anything because Brooke will kill me. This is his great demo org. Um, go to the third thing, Utility Bar, and you just pop in new components. So like this other app, this isn't the one we were just showing you. It only has a single one. You can add any standard lightning component. So I can add like a report chart in here and just have like a chart that everybody sees with one click access. I can add in things like notes and history and macros. And this is where you go to configure the utility bar. Yes. yes. But I think Brooke would argue that the sales console is awesomer. Well, yeah. Uh, but under the covers, technically, my job in Lightning Platform is to make them very similar. My job is to build platform-wide things that sales can use, that service can use, that customers that want to create custom console apps can use. And we've really tried hard in Lightning to make sure that there's no asterisks. In Classic, if you're configuring a sales console app, a bunch of those objects had asterisks, being like, ah, we didn't tested, so you might not want to use this, but you can try if you want to. Whereas in Lightning, we've tested it all. So if there's bugs, we are going to fix them. But under the covers, they're both just apps. It's just dis different defaults and different lists of things. You could put cases in the Sales Console app if you really wanted to. You could put opportunities in the Sales Console app, or the Service Console app if you want to. Yes, JavaScript API is in pilot. Um, so if you want to access the JavaScript APIs in a sandbox or production, contact your sales rep. They'll file a request. Basically, I'll approve it because I'm nice and I like you guys. And then you can use them in your sandbox and production org. Or you can skip the middleman, go dra directly to developer edition, and you can just start programming against those. We have a public uh, documentation on all of this, which I think I have a link to. Oh, not in here, but uh, it's basically a console JavaScript APIs. 
uh, and you'll find it in the classic guide. Right. Right. No, so for that particular company, that might literally be, so what, what Einstein does is it goes back through your history. So in that case, for, that, for your company, when a competitor is mentioned, that might just generally indicate that the sales process is three months instead of one month, right? Because somebody's you know, potentially going back and forth between two and shopping against each other and doing comparative analysis and that kind of thing. So we don't know why, we don't necessarily know why but for that organization, and certainly it wouldn't necessarily be applied to all organizations, but for that organization, they've found that when competitors are mentioned, the sales cycle is protracted. Yeah, so, but my question was, the, the sales that entered and the comment that the competition quantum was Right. Was the word competition trigger? Was the word quantum? No, it's quantum. Very good question. No, just and again, it goes back to the thing I was saying about um, titles when I said you don't have to put a list of titles in there. You don't have to put a list of, of competitors in there, which is really great because you don't have to maintain and manage when competitor A acquires competitor B. It doesn't matter. It's just, it just happens in the world and the system realizes it over time. When new competitors pop up and you and I see them in TechCrunch or whatever, the system will recognize those in short order because they will start getting mentioned in conversation with other competitors. It's super powerful. Fun fact, I built one of the free lead scoring apps on the App Exchange, like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, where you have to go and click. And you're like, OK, if title equals VP, oh, wait, that doesn't do vice president. OK, if title equals vice president, create rule. If title equals VP, like, it sucks. You have to go in there and, like, you have to configure these rules all the time. Like, Einstein is basically auto-magical. It just figures it out. It's like inspecting the things very privately and securely, and it effectively creates the rules for you under the covers without you having to do work. Well, see, that's the magical of auto-magical. Um, so, I mean, the best thing to do is... Question, by the way, what's that? can you repeat the question? Oh, sorry. The question was, where can we go to see those rules that, that Einstein uses? Um, you know, I'd actually say that the best thing to do in, in our world, in our evolving world, is to go uh, grab a little primer on, um, on machine learning. Um, it's just so interesting because these are complex algorithms that don't necessarily have rules, they create rules. They identify relationships. So um, Einstein lead scoring is actually a great one to look at because it's saying all we care about is conversion, right? Not the sale afterwards or anything, but that one event. So we have one discrete event, and it's, it's what are all these characteristics um, that, uh, that lead to a converted lead. We actually were doing some testing in one environment and found a funny, it returned a funny result. It said something to the effect of a high scoring characteristic is no first name. Well, that's because we didn't have first names in the system. So we were just converting. So, you know, so the, the this machine identified no first name as being uh, highly correlated to conversion. It, it, it actually, your system won't do that, but um, it does look for those things whether you would identify those naturally yourself or not. So what you can add is data, so, and that's wonderful. So you might actually find yourself wanting to go out and, and, and procure or add or augment leads with additional data. So company size, um, geographic locations, uh, you know, headquarters outside of the United States. Um, and the more data that's added, the more it won't necessarily identify those characteristics as good, but it has the opportunity to look at those characteristics. So the other thing about machine learning, which is so wonderful, is that you can, it doesn't matter if you have 100, um, 100 uh, fields or 1,000 fields, it will look at all of those fields and, and, and work to identify those characteristics. No, you can still, well, the thing is, you can still, right, because you have tribal knowledge, and that's a wonderful thing, and I don't want to, you know, demean that at all. So there is information that your organization knows that's, that's 
amazing, right, and wonderful. And so you can still use rules. It's not that you'll necessarily add that to, you're not pushing that into as part of the Einstein score, but you're still doing scoring and managing your data um, with your admin configured rules. It's not, you're not necessarily taking those all away. This, this is another tool that you can use. We'll take one more. The one that you saw on the bottom? Yes, yes that's, a, that's a partner company of ours called, called Level 11. There are several um, app exchange partners who are just really good um, with, with data, and, and this one does data presentation and has this particular tool that, uh, that um, works with the console. So um, we're just highlighting them today. But uh, yeah, I would definitely explore the app exchange because there are partners out there. The name of this one's Level 11, one word. So thank you all for giving us your time at 5 o'clock. Please go have a drink. We appreciate it. <laughs>